the massive container ship Ever Given ran aground on the 23rd of March during its northbound transit through the Suez Canal and blocked all traffic, effectively putting the canal's operation into an abrupt halt and disrupted global shipping. After six days of continuous efforts, salvage teams have finally freed the 220,000 ton container ship. Over the past few days, dredging teams have been working to refloat the Ever Given, but initial efforts have met with little success. A major breakthrough was achieved on Monday as a fleet of tugboats timed their actions with a high tide and finally managed to free the Ever Given six days after being grounded. The ship continued its course northward through the canal on its own power while being escorted by tugboats. At present, it is anchored at the Great Bitter Lake, which serves as a waiting area for ships transiting the Suez Canal. Meanwhile, canal operations almost immediately resumed as soon as the blockage was cleared and ship convoys have started their transit. So now that the Ever Given is safely anchored, what happens next? After the occurrence of major incidents, ships will need to undergo a number of investigations and surveys before it can be allowed to sail out again. And since the grounding happened in the Suez Canal, the Egyptian port state control has the authority to detain the vessel, which is one of the reasons why the Ever Given is presently at anchor in the Great Bitter Lake. And it will remain there until such time that the ship is determined to be seaworthy and once the ship owners and the Suez Canal Authority have reached an agreement. Investigations will also be carried out to determine the root cause of the incident. Was it the weather, machinery failure, or human error? This will involve the retrieval of various ship's logs and records like the engine telegraph and alarm logs, but the most important information will be from the ship's VDR, or Voyage Data Recorder. As I mentioned in the previous video, it's the equivalent of an airplane's black box and it records the ship's navigation data as well as the audio from the bridge. So yes, whatever conversations they were having at the bridge leading to the time of the incident would have been recorded. The results of this investigation will also be used for the insurance claims. There will also be a survey conducted by the ship's classification society, which as per the ship's particulars is ABS or American Bureau of Shipping. The primary role of the classification society is to classify ships and validate that their design and calculations are in accordance with published standards, and also to carry out periodical surveys of ships to ensure that they continue to meet the parameters of the set standards. These standards are based on the different international conventions like SOLAS, MARPOL, and COLREG, and of course the ISM code, to name a few. If the ships meet the standards, the classification society will issue the relevant certificates on behalf of the ship's flag administration. In short, these certificates are like licenses or registration to operate. In the case of the Ever Given, since it was involved in a major incident, the ship's safety management certificate and a few other certificates will be in question. So there's going to be an audit for that. And since there's a big possibility of structural damage, a survey of the hull, ballast tanks, and fuel tanks will also be conducted. Usually after a grounding incident, the ship will need to carry out an underwater survey. So scuba divers will be needed to check for any external damages underwater. Again, in the case of the Ever Given, both the bow and the stern have come into contact with the ground. So there's a possibility that the propellers might have suffered some damages as well. Also, as we can see in the video, the Ever Given is listing to her port side, which means it's uh, like this, tilting. <laughs> yes, tilting to the left. I'm not sure entirely if that's because of a hull breach or if it was intentional to take in some ballast. I don't know yet. But the extent of the damage will be one of the deciding factors to determine the next steps. If there is significant structural damage, the ship might be required to go for emergency dry docking. If so, they will need to offload their cargo first, somewhere nearby. But if the damage is minor, there is a possibility that the scuba divers themselves may have the capability of carrying out repairs. But either way, the ship won't be certified by the classification society 
unless repairs are carried out. And then, there's the question of settlement with the Suez Canal Authority. The canal earns an average of about $15 million per day, so they will definitely file a claim for lost revenue, the salvage operation, and damages to the canal. For the other claims, that will be settled in court. And those things usually take a very long time. So, once the ship owners have settled all the repairs, certification, and have come to an agreement with the Suez Canal Authority, only then will they ever given be free to go and resume her voyage. <laughs>